Welcome back in my kitchen. Let's have a look, closer look at sweetness and ways to obtain sweetness or get sweetness into your foods. As I mentioned, sweet is one of the most basal flavors. It's one of the flavors that we basically understand from the moment we we're born. It's ingrained into us to seek out things that are sweet. It's imprinted upon our neural matrix, however you want to say it. The problem, of course, is that a lot of the sweet things that are available nowadays have nothing to do with health. And if you, on the other hand, try completely eliminating everything sweet from your diet, and not necessarily things that contain the unhealthy types of sweetness we find, but anything that tastes sweet for a lot of people, that will backfire after a certain period of time because their most primitive impulses, basically the reptile brain, is going to demand something sweet. So let's look at some things that you could use instead. So the first place to start, of course, is to say that, I mean, what would, what would be a better source of sweetness than refined sugar or high fructose corn syrup? A starting point would be fruit. So just fresh fruit, like apples, bananas, oranges, where the juice is slightly sweet as well. And if you go for fruits that are ripe and that have been picked when they ri have ripened, you'll actually get a lot of natural sweetness. Again, of course, there's still sugar in here. It will still affect your blood sugar levels, although with the fruit, there's also some fructose. So the elevation in blood sugar might not be that high, but still your liver has to deal with the fructose. But at least that would be a source of sweetness where you'll get something else along at the same time. You'll get fibers, you'll get phytochemicals, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and trace elements. So that's a starting point. So I'd say one thing to consider is to, to satisfy the sweet tooth, just have a bit of fruit. So if you make a salad, add some apple, add half a banana sliced or something along those lines, or have one or two pieces of fruit a day, that shouldn't be a problem unless you have severe diabetes. That, for many people, should be enough to satisfy their sweet tooth, and then you've satisfied your sweet tooth with something that's actually wholesome and nutritious. Another possibility would be dried fruit. So things like dates, apricots, raisins. Again, of course, the dried fruit is more concentrated in sweetness than the fresh fruit, but it would still be a better choice than using straight sugar because you get fibers, you get polyphenols and other phytochemicals in there. You get vitamins, minerals, and trace elements. And also, a lot of these things are a bit more chewy. So yeah, I mean, if you want to eat an apricot or a date, you actually have to chew it. The same thing with the apple or the banana or the orange. And remember, the actual action of chewing actually helps satisfy you. So the more time you spend chewing food, masticating it essentially, the more full you'll feel. So that's also a possibility. And thinking of the glycemic index or the sugar levels, in fact, apricots are somewhat gentler in in terms of sugar content or somewhat lower in terms of sugar content compared with dates. So that would certainly be a possibility. Of course, also with dried fruits, you get things like goji berries, some of these other so-called superfoods. I wouldn't call them superfoods. I'd just say they're another fantastic food. So that's also a possibility to add a bit of sweetness. Then we have things like honey or agave syrup. Now, remember with agave syrup, that although it has a low glycemic index, it's still sugar, it's just that most of it is fructose, and therefore you can't just use it in massive amounts, because what happens is with fructose, yes, it will not let your blood sugar levels go up, but your liver has to handle that fructose load, and the result, if you overload your liver with fructose, will be um, lipogenesis in your liver, so you're making fat straight in your liver, you'll have endogenous production of cholesterol, you'll alter the metabolism and release of cholesterol particles, You'll get insulin resistance, and if you really go at it with fructose, you might actually have your liver uh, going into a state where it will start releasing acute phase reactants like CRP. But again, agave syrup and honey contain other nutrients on the side and are about twice as sweet as straight sugar on a gram for gram basis. So you could use those in small amounts as well. Then we have some of these things that I see. All these, they look like sugar, a little bit of a bit artificial, but they could also be sensible. So what I have here is I have this one. I'm just going to do something and taste it to make sure it's the right one. 
So this one is erythritol. So it's a polyolar sugar alcohol and it's naturally present in quite a few things. So you'll find it in flowers, you'll find it in nectar from flowers, you'll find it in apricots, you'll find it in um, plums, you'll fi actually find it in um, cauliflower as well. And it has no caloric value, it will not affect your blood sugar levels. So that would be something you could use once in a while, you know, if you want to bake a cake or you really want something sweet on your pancakes, and I'll show you how to make those in a wholesome version later on. You know, that would certainly be one possibility to use erythritol. The only downside is if you eat too much of it, then you'll get diarrhea. And you can get erythritol in different forms. So this one is quite fine. Um, and you can also get it more granular. Now, the other thing I have here, which is also a polyol, is erith or xylitol. Sure, yeah, that one, xylitol, which could also be a better solution. Xylitol has about 40% the caloric value of sugar on a gram for gram basis. It has a very low glycemic index, and xylitol is actually made endogenously in human beings. So, although the xylitol you get if you buy it as a natural sweetener or a non caloric or low caloric, blood sugar friendly sweetener. It's not really alien to your body because it's been present in nature from way before human beings ever evolved. And the human body makes somewhere between five and 15 grams endogenously. So it's not a completely strange substance for your body. And the final thing I have here is stevia extract. In fact, I also have some li liquid stevia extract here. So stevia is also a possibility if you really must have sweetness because Obviously, it has no caloric value, and stevia, unless you get it from some sort of, I mean, um, from a GMO version, but if you get it organic, the sweetness in here comes from proteins, not from sugar, so you get, in some way, guilt-free sweetness. The thing to remember with stevia, though, is that it's a intensely sweet, so you have to really be careful about the dosage, because if you use just a little bit too much, then everything will become disgustingly sweet. Also, stevia doesn't have the same texture as sugar. Sometimes when you bake, sugar is not just added because of the flavor, it's also added because of the texture or fill it will give. And stevia cannot do that. Now, the other thing to consider is that there are actually spices you could use and other things. So remember that cinnamon is quite sweet. So. Here I have whole cinnamon sticks, but you, you know, ground cinnamon works wonderfully. You have allspice that also tastes sweet, or cardamom. So adding some of these things to a salad, to a dressing, to a dessert, whatever you're making, will actually also give you a bit of sweetness. And in terms of cinnamon, of course, it, it contains coumarin. So in very large amounts, you will, you might get, you know, problems from too much coumarin. It, at least I've had a few patients who had very sensitive livers and who in fact got into trouble when they used coumarin for, um, as a blood thinner because they had problems with um, their cardiovascular system. And they also, when they started eating large amounts of cinnamon, they had elevated liver enzymes. But cinnamon is quite effective both as a sweetener and remember that cinnamon also can help stabilize your blood sugar levels. And there are two types of cinnamon. So you have cassia cinnamon and you have the real Ceylon cinnamon. And the cassia cinnamon has way more coumarin in it. So if you use the true Salem cinnamon, that's actually much lower in coumarin. And you can see this one's the true Salem cinnamon because it's quite thin and fragile, so I can actually break it with my fingers. The cassia cinnamon looks more like bark from a, from a, or thick bark from a tree. So one way to check if you get cinnamon a stick, whether it's the higher or the low coumarin type, is to see if you can actually break it with your finger, whether it's thin and fragile or thicker and harder. Also, if you buy cinnamon, if you get high quality, then the product should actually say what type of cinnamon, whether it's true Ceylon cinnamon or cassia cinnamon. So of course, that's one possibility. And there are a few other spices or things that can add flavor. So remember, vanilla is actually quite good in terms of amplifying sweetness. So if you add a bit of vanilla to whatever you want, taste sweet it will taste sweeter so here's just freeze-dried vanilla and licorice is quite sweet as well so here I have licorice powder now 
I'll just show you something because you can get ground licorice root and you can get real licorice powder. And that's the root and that's the powder. Now you can see there's a difference because the ground licorice root is a bit more earth colored or a bit more yellow, not as dark. And as you can see, it's also a bit rougher or a bit more granular. That's because you have all the fiber from the licorice root in there. And that actually changes the flavor. So if you get licorice root powder, it tastes almost a bit dusty or earthy. Therefore go for pure licorice extract, which tastes quite sweet amongst other reasons because it contains glycerinitic acid. So that's one possibility that will give you sweetness. And also you can sometimes get freeze dried either berries or here's actually freeze dried beetroot juice, which tastes quite sweet. So you could use that as a natural sweetener as well. And finally, of course, we have nut butter. So here's cashew nut butter. So technically speaking, it's actually not a nut butter, it's a legume butter, but also almond butter, hazelnut butter and so forth. They all taste sweet. And cocoa powder or carob would also be ways of adding sweetness. So there are other things that can provide sweetness to satisfy your sweet tooth in a healthier and more sensible way. You just have to look for them. And then most of these things aren't that hard to add to your food. So I'll show you tricks later on how to do it. Now, the other thing to remember in terms of bringing out sweetness is what you could almost call counterpoint. So in fact, salt will enhance natural sweetness. If you go to any really high end, high quality restaurant of homemade ice cream, they'll usually add a very, very small amount of sea salt or rock salt to their homemade ice cream not because you want the ice cream to taste salty, but because the salt tastes so different from the egg yolks and the sugar and the cream or milk. 